We are so proud to be a station where people come to stay and make a difference in the community. Chief Investigator Reporter Phil Williams is here with us as we celebrate 25 years at News Channel 5. What an accomplishment, Phil. Well, good, good morning, and, and I'm with you all. I feel like I finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, it's, it's really what you've done, and we've talked about this all morning long in your public service. I, I think I can't, I'm glad we are sort of you know, putting you in the spotlight and what you've done because you've made a difference. Well, you know, and, and I grew up here and a lot of people in our business, they move around. Yeah. I'm content being in my home yes, and, yeah. and, and making a difference in my home. So it's yeah. It's been a rewarding experience. Yeah. And you're making this difference, but you're also getting all these awards as well. You've been recognized for your hard work over and over again. Emmys, murals, everything. And you're actually going to be honored again with a John Chancellor Award coming up. Um, yeah, th thank you, and, and it is an honor, but again, making a difference in the community is mm -hmm. really what it's all about, and I think the John Chancellor Award does recognize that. Mm -hmm. so. I think you set the tone really well for the people in this mm -hmm. building yeah. because you do work so hard to make a difference. You care so much about your community, and I think it makes other people here in the business care as well that work here too. Well, and, and my wife would tell you I, I don't have good work-life <laughs> balance <laughs> because I am so passionate about my work, yeah. yes. uh, but uh, again, it's important work that we, that we do for, for this community. Yeah. She knew that going in though, yes. right? <laughs> All right, so let's look back on these 25 years. In 2010, you got a tip on St. Patrick's Day that there were slot machines, right? And this was at the Davidson County Clerk's Office, so we're going to take a look at that. There we would find county clerk employees playing slot machines. So what's the point of putting in, are these tokens? Yeah. So what do you win? I think if you get three sevens, you get like five dollars. So Our search for answers quickly took a dramatic turn. No, we need you out of the break room. Why? Because I said so. And who are you? Let's go, Phil. Who are you? I believe you already asked him his name. Let's go. Oh, don't let's go. Don't get rough with me, sir. Let's go. This is public property. Get out. Please do not touch me. But John Ariolo was unapologetic. The question. Were they playing for money? Are you so uptight about St. Patrick's Day? Were they playing for money? What kind of problem do you have on any holiday? Were they playing for money? And obviously you have a problem. Were they playing for money? There's issues there that you just don't understand. I mean, you, I mean, you don't want to understand your own issues that you, know, that you have. Were they playing for money, John? So, I mean, I don't know why you can't see what the holiday is all about. Wow, oh, man. Yeah, that story has developed a bit of a cult following. Uh, people call it up every year on St. Patrick's yeah. Day. <laughs> and, and the truth is, that was one of those situations where if they had just explained what was going on, right. it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Yeah. But then their reactions exactly. make, made the story. Where do you, do you ever get nervous to just continuously ask the same question over and over to hope mm -hmm. getting an answer? Uh, I, I think from years of experience, I just know what my question is yeah. and, mm -hmm. and I try not to let them throw me. Well, in 2004, you shined a light on Gwen Shamblin, who was the founder of the Remnant Fellowship Church in Brentwood. All right, that was because of a death investigation of a child from the church there. So we're going to take a look at that now. They always said this is the true church. You know, there's no other church. Every, every other church out there is counterfeit. So this is drilled in your head, you know, week after week after week. In 2004, remnant couple Joseph and Sonia Smith were arrested for the child abuse death of their eight-year-old son, Joseph. Investigators wrote that the child had extensive bruising over his entire body, but the parents showed no remorse. They felt it was just part of discipline and were very defensive about their religion. Shamblin tells her followers not to worry about their children's self-esteem, instead worry about what she calls their God esteem. In the case of young Joseph, investigators say that meant his parents repeatedly locked him up in a small room with just his Bible. Does Remnant advocate locking children up for lengthy periods no, of time? No, no, that, we don't advocate locking them up for any period of time. Absolutely no. not. I have a tape of a telephone call between you and Sonia Smith. Uh, this is Sonia Smith in Atlanta. Sonia! I got to speak with Ted Anger. That's you. That's me. I did exactly what Ted told me to do. Take everything out of his room. We got everything out of there and locked him in there from that Friday until Monday and only left him in the room with his bottle. That tape has been yeah. made or tampered 
or whatever. I d totally deny that, is that, absolutely that has untrue. ever been said by anyone. In and that's a miracle. You've got a child that's going from just bizarre down to in control. So I'll praise God. And you had a chance to tell her that was not correct. That was not on there. Instead, you said, praise the Lord. No, that was not on there. We are spoiling these kids. We are, you know, ruining their lives by even letting them think about themselves at all. So thank you, Sonia, for sharing that. The Smiths would later be convicted of murder, and in 2021, Champlin would be killed in a plane crash. Mm, wow. I mean, you've dealt with a lot of heavy topics as well. Yeah, and I was really touched by the, the death of Joseph Smith uh, because, you know, this is an innocent child. Right. Yeah. And uh, th th there was another investigation I had where a child was killed. It was ruled to be an accident. We ended up years after the death uh, having that case reopened and the murderer was uh, sent to prison. Mm, wow. uh, so, I mean, th these stories involving children mm -hmm. who are killed really, you know, touched me personally. Yeah. Sure. Really heavy on you. Um, in 2011, you looked into how drug interdiction officers took cash right off of the drivers. Yeah, but it was based on suspicion that the drugs were, you know, the money and everything going back and forth. So let's take a look. We discovered that officers spent most of their time not working the side of the interstate where the drugs would come into the state, but working the side where drug money might be heading back to Mexico. We want both sides of the road worked. It looks like that they're not concerned about stopping the drugs, that they just want the money. That's what it looks like. Is that the case? And that shouldn't be the case, but that's what it looks like. It took me months to save that money, and it hurt me because they, the way they treated me and the way they treated my son. It was a practice that routinely victimized innocent people. I told them I had active bids on eBay that I was trying to buy a vehicle and they, they just didn't want to hear it. George Reby had $22,000 taken by a Monterey police officer. On the street, a $1,000 bundle could approximately buy two ounces of cocaine. Or the, or the money could have been used to buy a car. It's possible. I never had any clue that they thought they could, would be able to take my money legally. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. And, and this was a practice, uh, policing for profit, civil asset forfeiture is a technical term, where police could take money just based mm -hmm. on a suspicion that wow. it was drug money. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, usually uh, people from out of state would have to hire lawyers to come back and fight to get their money back. Some just never bothered because it just was too expensive. You know, and some reporters wouldn't take up a story like this because it involves, you know, yeah. officials and because, I mean, but I think that over the years you have shown that your political party or, you know, what, whatever political party it is, whoever it is, you're not afraid to ask the tough questions. That's right. right. Yeah. It doesn't matter which party. No. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you yeah. so much. We are much. proud to have you 25 on. 25 years. Salute you. Yeah, Such you. an accomplishment. <laughs> 25 years. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in about two minutes.